So hi everyone, I'm Mike Gottlieb. I'm one of the chief residents over at Cook County, as you mentioned, AMR, say vice president. And today I'm gonna to be discussing push dose pressors. Real quickly, no conflicts of interest to disclose. As a resident, there rarely are. And so we'll start off with a case. You have a 54-year-old female. She comes in via EMS. She's very dyspneic. She's ill-appearing. She's decreasing mental status. You look at her vitals, and you know that she's going to need to be intubated really quickly. But her blood pressure is really low, and you're concerned the intubation may cause an additional blood pressure drop, potentially causing her to arrest. So you start some IV fluids wide open, but you know they're not going to work right away. So this person needs fluids, potentially pressors fast. And both take time to work. Even if you have dopamine or norepinephrine in your picks, it takes time to get it set up, to get the drips put together, and even longer if pharmacy needs to get involved. So I'd like to propose the concept of push dose pressors. A little bit of background. Studies have demonstrated that when the mean arterial pressure is less than 45, patients are at increased risk of hemodynamic collapse. There's also evidence demonstrating that post-intubation hypotension is associated with increased morbidity and mortality. Now, IV fluids, even if you're going to use a pressure bag, take time to work. And vasopressors require time to, for mixing, for pump setup, and available nursing staff. Now, there's actually pretty extensive anesthesia literature discussing this, but not really a lot in the emergency medicine literature. Now, real quickly as an aside, push dose pressors is a term coined by Scott Weingart, but their, their use in the anesthesia literature has been present for over 30 years, def described as bolus dose administration of phenylephrine or ephedrine. But because that's really long, we're going to stick with push dose pressors. Now, in the anesthesia literature, there's good evidence for its safety and efficacy. As I mentioned, over 30 years they've been using this, predominantly for post-spinal anesthesia hypotension of pregnant patients. And in fact, this is one of the drugs of choice in the operating room when a patient becomes severely hypotensive. Now, if you really think about it, push dose pressors really aren't that different from a vasopressor drip in that the doses you're giving per minute are about the same. And really, it's just a rapid route to start a vasopressor infusion in these sicker patients. Now, this is not intended for all patients. It's not intended for the mildly hypotensive patient that you just want to bridge and make the numbers look good. This is meant for the very sick patients. This is meant for the severely hypotensive patient, either peri-intubation or during procedural sedation. Or again, recalling that MAP less than 45 is associated with increased risk of hemodynamic collapse. This may also be valuable as a vasopressor infusion as you're trying to get the drip set up. Remembering that it takes time to actually get these set up. And if your patient's very sick, you could potentially start it at the bedside while you're waiting for nursing to get it out of the pixels or potentially pharmacy to make it. Now, anesthesia classically is used phenylephrine and ephedrine. Now, phenylephrine is great because it's easily titratable. It has a short half-life. Most of us are pretty familiar with it. You don't really see ephedrine. Uh, sorry, you don't really see ephedrine in the ED setting though, because it has a much longer half-life. It has a, a significant potential for missed dosing. Rather, most experts recommend using epinephrine in the ED setting again because it's shorter half-life, easily, easily available, pretty good to titrate. Most of us are familiar with it. So we'll start with phenylephrine. Phenylephrine, remember, is a predominantly alpha agonist, meaning it causes significant vasoconstriction, but it may also cause a reflex bradycardia. So this is ideal for the patient who's profoundly hypotensive and profoundly tachycardic, some attacking away in the 160s, 170s, for whom you do not want to give additional beta adrenergic stimulation. The dose is 0.5 to 2 mLs, or 50 to 200 micrograms every one to five minutes. Time of is less than one minute, and it lasts for about five to 10 minutes. Fairly easy to make. You're going to draw 1 ml, of 1 ml of phenylephrine from the vial. You're going to inject it into a 100 ml bag of 0.9 normal saline. Pull off 10 mLs, and now your concentration is 100 mics per ml. This really takes like 15 seconds to do. So you can do this. You have your syringe. You can get 0.5 to 2 mLs, 50 to 200 micrograms every one to five minutes, titrating to effect. Now the nice thing is now you have a drip set up, so you can also start that as a drip. And phenylephrine is unique in the fact that they also have a pre-mixed syringe that can be stocked in your pixels, so you don't even have to necessarily mix it up which is a lot of what anesthesia does, they use a premixed syringe. Now, moving on to epinephrine. Epinephrine is a mixed alpha and beta agonist. So it's both a, both, both a vasoconstrictor as well as a, a chronotrope, so it'll increase your blood pressure and your heart rate. Great for the patient who's hypotensive and bradycardic, and even those who are mildly tachycardic, but not as ideal for the patient who's severely, severely tachycardic. Again, dose 0.5 to 2 mLs, 5 to 20 micrograms every 1 to 5 minutes, time of onset less than 1 minute, and a duration about 5 to 10 minutes. Super easy to make again, syringe of normal saline, ampule cardiac epinephrine, and either catheter or a syringe, or, or sorry, catheter or needle for transfer. That's all you need. You're gonna take your 10 ml syringe, remove one ml, so now you have nine mLs in the syringe, sorry, go back to you. Now you have nine mLs in the syringe and one ml of empty space available. You're going to inject one ml of cardiac epinephrine in the syringe, shake it really well to make sure it distributes. Now your concentration is 10 mics per ml. Again, you're gonna give 0.5 to two mLs, five to 20 micrograms every one to five minutes, titrating to effect. So is this safe? Well, first of all, the dose that you're giving is the same as that you, which you would be giving as an infusion. 
And there's pretty good evidence demonstrating that giving vasopressors through a peripheral line is safe. It has a very low rate of complications. However, even if it does infiltrate, phenylephrine and epinephrine are approved for subcutaneous intramuscular use. In fact, the dose of epinephrine is the same as that when you give lidocaine with epinephrine for anesthesia. And it's less than that given for anaphylaxis, remembering that we used to give epinephrine and anaphylaxis subcutaneously. So a couple of caveats. All right? not, not everything in medicine is 100% always good. So there's limited evidence in the emergency department setting. And despite extensive anesthesia literature, most of the studies were performed in you know, previously healthy, well-hydrated, OB patients, as opposed to a much sicker ED patient. So it does require a further ED study. However, this should be considered as a potential temporary solution, but you have to keep in mind that this is something that is a bridging solution and should not replace other appropriate interventions as well as appropriate post-intubation assessments. So in conclusion, remember that MAP less than 45 is associated with increased risk of hemodynamic collapse. IV fluids, vasopressors really do take a lot more time than we think they're going to take. And in a sick patient who's severely hypotensive, consider push-dose pressors as a bridge to fluids and vasopressor therapy. These are some selected references. Thank you guys so much for your time and attention. I'm happy to answer any questions.